Adam Thorpe on her blindness. My mother could not bear being blind, to be honest. One shouldn't say it. One should hide the fact that catastrophic handicaps are hell. One tends to hear publicly from those who bear it like a Roman, or somehow find joy in the fight. She turned to me once in a Paris restaurant, still not finding the food on the plate with her fork, or not so that it stayed on. Try it in a pitch black room, and whispered, it's living hell to be honest, Adam. If I gave up hope of a cure, I'd bump myself off. I don't recall what I replied, but it must have been the usual sop, inadequate. The locked in sun, she kept her dignity though, even when bumping into walls like a dodgem. Her sense of direction did not improve, when cast inward. No built in compass, as my father joked. Instead, she pretended to ignore the void or laughed it off, or saw things she couldn't and smiled, as when the kids would offer the latest drawing or show her their new toy. So we'd forget at times that the long, slow slide had finished in the vision as blank as stone. For instance, she continued to drive the old Lancaster long after it was safe. Down by the Berkshire lanes, she'd visit exhibitions, admire films, sink into television while looking the wrong way. Her last week alive, a fortnight back, was golden weather of course, the autumn trees around the hospital ablaze with colour, the ground royal with leaf fall. I told her this, forgetting, as she sat, too weak to move, staring at nothing. Oh yes, I know, she said. It's lovely out there. Dying has made her no more sightless, but now she can't pretend. Her eyelids were closed in the coffin. It was up to us to believe she was watching, somewhere, in the end.